Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing okay. Um, I had to get out for a little while. It was easier for me to come down to the school and use the whiteboard here so I can show you a little bit about the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to show you how to manipulate it a little bit as well. So the first part we're going to do is we're going to solve for the hypotenuse, which is C in the, in the Pythagorean theorem. And since the Pythagorean theorem says that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we have some dimensions here for A and B, and I'm going to show you how we use that. We're going to take A, which is 9 inches, and we're going to square that, and that's going to become 81, because 9 squared is 81. And then we're going to add B squared, which is 12 inches. When you square 12, you get 144. And when you put them both together, you get 225. Well, this is definitely not 225 inches. And the reason that we have that such a big number is because this is squared and this is squared, which means this is also a squared number. So how do we undo a squared number? We use square root. So we're going to take the square root of 225. And that equals 15. But since it's square root, it could be plus or minus. So it could be or negative 15. Well, we, we have a definite line there, and we know that it's not negative because it, it can't be negative. So we can just eliminate the negative half of it. We're not going to even worry about that, and we're just going to go with 15. So that's telling us that C equals 15 inches. Okay? Seems reasonable, 9, 12, and 15. What happens... If when I get into here, I don't have B, but I do have C. Well, I can still use the Pythagorean theorem for that. And what's going to happen is we end up with this. Okay, a squared, which is 81, plus b squared, which we don't know, equals c squared. So we're going to solve this like we do anything else algebraically. We're going to subtract 81 from this side, subtract 81 from this side. So when I subtract 81 from 225, I get 144. So I have B squared equals 144. Because these are going to cancel out. Well, now I've got a square and a square. So how do we get rid of that? We put them both under a radical. Okay? And we end up with the radical and the square cancel each other out, which leaves us with just B. And the square root of 144 is 12. Okay? Same thing that we had before. So you know that it works that way too. So that's going to equal 12 inches. And we could do the same thing with, the, with, with, with A. What we'll, all we'll be, end up doing is just subtracting with the B, which is tw 12, which is 144 from 225. And that'll leave us with 81, and the square root of 81 is 9. Okay? So hopefully this is giving you a little ins insight into how we can manipulate these equations. And I, I, I'm going to do it over here a little bit just to show you that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I could take any one of these and move it over to here. I could say I need to find b squared. I'm going to subtract a squared. Subtract a squared. That's going to cancel each other out. It's going to leave me b squared equals c squared minus a squared. Okay? Or I could go ahead and do 
a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I could subtract b squared. They'll cancel each other out. We'll leave a squared equals c squared minus b squared. Okay. All you have to do is plug the numbers in for the letters, and you're going to be doing okay. Okay. If you have any questions about the Pythagorean theorem, you could go ahead and give me a, a message on, on um, Google Classroom, or you can get me in Quick Schools, or you can get me on my personal uh, on my school email at lock teacher art palachet at gmail.com you all should know that email you should have it written down somewhere if not ask me for it and I'll give it to you um, in the meantime I hope that this is a good some good information for you and you're gonna get something out of it I sent you a couple of Khan Academy videos to watch that kind of explain the same thing um, there's a couple of different other ones that are there on how to use it on an isosceles triangle. Um, you can use it on a couple of other triangles as long as you have the information per, that, that you need. And, and what you need is to have the height of the triangle, which is a perpendicular line dropped from the vertex. Um, so you have to know how to calculate that too. And we'll go with, into that at a later time. So for now, if you haven't got any questions, and um, you're, you're well on your way. I should expect to be seeing some assignments turned in real soon. Have a great day, guys, and I will hopefully see you when school comes back in in April.